Welcome to Arts Beyond Museum. I'm Khan, and I'm your curator for this series. Now, we know that Arts Beyond Museums, we are going to bring Mastin's paintings to wonderful and beautiful places around Singapore to exhibit them. Here, you might be familiar. This is Boat Key. We're not bringing it to Boat Key today, actually. It's a little place, a small gem. There's somewhere over there. Historically, they're all connected. Boat Key, in the past, Many, many merchants, especially, you know, Teochew merchants came together here and eventually they formed this thing called 18 Merchant Houses beside the river or riverside. I think in Teochew they call it Zapui King, a bit like the shop houses behind me. This place was so important that a lot of other streets around the place were influenced by that name. Let's go and take a look. Today, Arts Beyond Museums brings you to this hidden gem, the Tear, along Upper Circular Road. Here, in the past, they are used to have what we call the staples or the places that actually have the horses for the Teochew merchants. So it's one time, it was called Ma Se Lu, okay, the road for staples or the road for horses as well. But today, we are not here for horses, we are here for Arts Beyond Museums and we are exhibiting Master Yun's Feng Shui paintings at this wonderful place. What is this place all about? Is this a bar? Is this a restaurant? Let's find out. Now, before we go any further, for new friends, if you're wondering what is Lotus on Water, and who exactly is this painter, the one behind all these arts, who exactly is Master Yun Longzi? Master Yun, he is the sixth generation Feng Shui master in his family. In 2006, inheriting all the wisdom, knowledge and experience, Master Yun, he founded Lotus on Water. In 2019, Master Yun was recognised by China CCTV. They came to Singapore and made a huge documentary for him and they gave him many, many different awards, including Achievement in Arts Award, Yi Jing Gold Medal Master Award and so on. Now, till date, Master Yun has had 14 major art exhibitions all around the world. One of them, very much worthy of mention, is the one on the Great Wall of China in 2020 December. Now, Great Wall of China has 3,500 years of history and is about 4,700 kilometers away from Singapore. No one has ever exhibited on the Great Wall of China other than Master Yun himself. Now, Le Terre, it's a French word. It actually means the earth, right? This is actually a very cozy bar, a nice gem hidden in the whole bustling CBD or the central business district area. Even in the past, it was pretty much a central business district. This place, small, but as what we call in Chinese, Ma Chue, Sui Xiao, Wu Zhang Ju Quan. A pigeon or a sparrow might be small, but it has all the necessary organs. And I think this place has more than that, because this place has many extensive, wonderful, valuable spirits, wines, and alcohol. Uh, and in 2021, they were awarded the Platinum Award for their New World Wine List and their Old World Wine List. That's something to behold. La Terre's chief sommelier uh, and co-founder is Mr. Taizuke Kawaisan and he's named this place in French, as I said before, called The Earth. One of the reasons is because that he wants to go back and recognize where these grapes or where these wine grapes or the uh, materials for the whiskey came from, the ingredients from the soil, recognizing them that makes them what they taste like and their quality and so on. So we can see the insistence and quality and standards by Mr. Daisuke san. We look at Master Yun's painting, there's a similar trait that the insistence on the quality is very important and where they come from. The majority of the precious painting materials that Master Yun use is actually from the earth as well. For instance, like gold and silver. Actually on this, we see a few different kinds of gold. This is real 24K gold. Beneath it a little bit, it's 18K gold to create the texture. So let's look flat, uh, silver. All these are actually from the earths, right? And the paper, we know it's tongba paper. Actually tongba paper is made from some of the very fine herbs. They, and then they make it into tongba paper. 
Now, even the ink that Mark Student use, even though that it's with glass, so even though you are close up, you can't smell it, but actually the scent is very fragrant. The ink, the black ink is what we call pine soot ink, which means that it is the pine after it's been charcoal, soot, and that is made into the ink. Okay, Song Yen Mo Pine Soot Ink. Even this is natural. It's from ash, it's from the earth, right? Uh, vermilion, the red markings you see, the seals, and this is of pure grade vermilion. In Chinese, what we call Chun Jing Zhu Sa. So just these few materials, everything is very insistent on where they came from, are they of high standards? Is this natural? Is this the finest grid? And so on. In just one of Mastering's paintings, the insistence on where it came from, the soil, the earth, the tear, it's very important as well. One more interesting fact is that we see this painting, this whole series has the same name, it's called He Tian Fu Di Tu. Now, in English, it's called Greetings to Heaven and Enrichment of Earth. Together with the painting we just saw, they share the same title, and the title is He Tian Fu Di Tu, Greetings to Heaven and Enrichment of Earth. All right, it belongs to the same series, it is the same series that went up to the Great War of China. Here, this is 034, all right? Now, the restaurant or the bar here is called the Te, which means the Earth, and Mastering's painting has this Enrichment of Earth. So I think there is something that is faithfully coincidental here. Over here, we see two cranes coming together, looking at each other. If you can feel it intensely, with a lot of passion, coming together, it's just like heaven and earth coming together. It's just like different art forms coming together. Even Mastering's art form, visual art, together with uh, Lattes, uh, expertise in wine, expertise in whiskey, that form of art form coming together to create a very holistic feel about what it means to be prosperous, what it means to go back to the origins, what it means to celebrate. I think this is really the thing that Mastering's art is bridging and stemming from. We look closer, we see that in the color splashing, which is the founding layers of Mastering's paintings, uh, majority green on the top, a little bit brownish and purplish here, which is a bit rare in Mastering's painting because this kind of colors is really very earthly. And this might be one of the paintings that you look at it, okay, I think these two cranes might be in a more natural setting than the other more imaginary plain ones. Over here as well, on the crane's body, we see that on top of the 24K gold, we get some of the color splashing that went on it as if they have merged with the background. The green color splashing, I wonder how they will look under the UV light. We are very happy to have with us Mr. Taisuke Kawaii-san, uh, the chief sommelier and the co-founder of this amazing place, La Terre. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. So, can you tell us a little bit more about this establishment, La Terre? Oh, sure. The La Terre is started in 2015, right? Uh, five years and a half around now. Okay. Uh, basically, we are serving uh, wine and whiskeys and some small snacks. Both this wine list, New World and Old World wine list, your place, the Terre, here we are, has the Platinum Award. Yes. Wow. <laughs> we have around 500 types of wines. 500 types of wine? Yes. Where do you hide it? <laughs> <laughs> What's your um, criteria? Like, what would you decide? Like, this is a good wine for the Terre. Mm, of course, the wine quality fast and price-wise not so expensive. Okay. Or maybe some rare wine uh -huh. people cannot find at other place. Right. Mm. And especially we are strong for the older vintages. Older vintages. Yes. What are some of your recommendations if uh, yeah here at the ten? Uh, what they should have? One of the one. Uh, I can show this one, uh, Chianti Classico Reserva by Querecabella. 
and vintage is 93 1993 i think so <laughs> i think some of the people watching this now probably they are just born in 1993 maybe someone this, <laughs> this is actually older than a lot of people yes most people and this is from Italy. Yeah, Italy, Toscana. And that's one of the old world wines that we are talking about. True. And 1993 is actually quite the vintage. Yes. How much is this going for? It's uh, only $200 plus something. $200 plus. Yeah. So that's uh, for, for a bottle that's 1993. Mm. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, wow. we have uh, more the old, all the vintage wines at the affordable prices. Right. So vintage, it gets the whole thing more silky more sophisticated at the same time at a value that it's amazing thank you what is the you. one of the most expensive bottles that you might have owned here at the moment uh, which is from france bourgogne pinot noir uh, ali jaye uh, bon romane cropalanto which is uh, thirty thousand dollars i'm sorry how much uh three zero thousand cake singapore dollars yes <laughs> thousand singapore dollars <laughs> yeah wow okay so if you're a red wine fan and you like uh old world red wine or even the new world ones and you're one who is going after something that's a bit different more rare as vintage i think this is really the place to come to you have seen master yun's heavenly feng shui paintings but have you seen his feng shui calligraphies Master Yun has been recognized as the founding father of feng shui arts, feng shui painting, and feng shui calligraphy. The first time when feng shui calligraphies were ever exhibited was on the Great War of China. Speak with us to find out your choices for selectable feng shui calligraphies today. Other than red wines on the menu, I'm going to study uh, uh, the Taya's menu. It's very thick very very thick so you must really come and see it there is also champagne yes on your menu mm. and of course since you're talking about champagne and we know that on Mastering's painting some of the layers of the color splashing he uses champagne as well mm. for Lohong Perry champagne what do you serve here oh we have uh, La Cuvée La Cuvée mm. uh, Rosé Rosé and uh, Vintage 2007 and 8 the mm, yeah, yes. Millésime, yes. Yeah. And one more is the Grand Siècle. Oh, you have the Grand Siècle here as well. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay, so shall we talk about the Laurent Paris La Cuvée today? Okay, sure. Which is this. Yep. Uh, but today, I'm not the one who is going to pop the champagne because the expert is here. <laughs> uh, and I understand that Daisuke san has a special talent other than being a world best familiar, other than being a panel judge, uh, he has a talent and a very special one that we need to make space for it to open this champagne am I correct? yeah <laughs> I think we shall not talk more about it first let's take a look at what Mr. Taitsukis does I think I better run to another corner for this to happen enjoy the show alright uh, this is another way to open the champagne uh, um two top <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was. Uh, I'm glad I ran away. I'm glad I ran away when it happened. What? What Mr. Taisuke uh, did just now? It's what we call the sabrage. Sabrage. Yeah. Uh, if I'm correct, it's S A B R A G E. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a French thing. It's a. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. a French thing? Yes. Uh, I have never seen people pop a champagne like this. It's, is this common? It's, how, how, how is this common? Is this professional? This is professional way of doing it. Yes. And how long did you take to, to learn this thing? Uh, not long, but practice need many times, many times. Practice. I just yes. want, hopefully everyone can see that when they did it, they, uh, when Mr. Taisuke did it, it wasn't just getting the cock out but actually the top of the champagne yes. bottle was mm. literally sliced off <laughs> literally sliced off wow that's something that does it make the does it affect the taste of the champagne in that in that sense mm, not the taste okay affected, yeah but the whole 
thing to it, the whole essence of celebration and yes, the whole celebration. dramatic thing, it actually <laughs> adds the whole feeling as well. Yes. It's a bit like Master Yun's painting, you know, because the gold and silver that's on Master Yun's painting, it wasn't just applied like that. It was applied and then he has to use another weapon like this to actually beat it off, dust it off. So that in itself, I think all these forms of art actually do come together. So we have with us here in Lohong Paris, La Cove. Can you tell us something about this champagne? Oh, okay. Laurent Perrier has uh, the history of uh, more than 200 years. Yes. Because established 1812. Uh, That's right, yes. Mm. The started by the family of uh, uh, Roland and family of Perrier. They married and then oh. that is a uh, That's what they call it? Long Laurent Perrier. Perrier. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, and this cuvée that I have, La Cuvée, what's so special about this? We see the word La Cuvée mm -hmm. and we see roots as well. Can you explain uh, what does it actually mean? Yeah, uh, the La Cuvée means uh, it's like wine. wine. The flagship of the wine, the champagne uh -huh. from this uh, winery. Right. And the uh, brut is uh, dry. Dry, yes. Dry means less sugar. Is it? Less sugar, yes. Less sugar. Mm -hmm. Right. Shall we have a taste? Sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, we saw how Mr. Daisuke actually popped the champagne with the saber. That was a really amazing first experience in my life. I've never seen anything like that. I've never, never definitely have never seen it up close. I don't think you should see it up close because we went through a whole layer of glass. So it's something that you don't want to try and something that you don't want to be nearby when it happens. Now, on the contrary, uh, something that a lot of people would like to be very nearby when it happens is when Master Yun does his go dusting. So I think there's a lot of performance art involved in both things. We thought we were just here for some good champagne and good wine, but actually there's another aspect to it. There's another le level to enjoy this whole thing. Just like Master Yun's paintings, we have the visual art, yes. We can understand that there is a peacock, there's a crane, there are peonies and so on. But if you were, or if you happen to have seen Master Yun during his overseas art exhibition in Netherlands, into Spain, you have seen him demonstrate how he actually whipped the gold off the painting and revealing that painting was the peacock and revealing the cranes here as if this painting comes to life with the stroke. For that, try not to get too up close because that is also lethal, it's also a weapon, soft weapon nonetheless, it will whip you. But a lot of people would like, like to get as close as possible because when Master Yun is doing this and after he's done, many people who are close by will be the first to be nearly entirely covered with gold and silver, the ones that fall off the painting, revealing what it is that we have here. So for us, it's a great blessing. If you have the chance to go for Master Yun's exhibition, when the chance allows, and if Master Yun is doing that performance, you want to be nearby, but not too near. But let's take a look at this painting. Same series, He Tian Fu Di Tu, Greetings to Heavens and Enrichment of Earth. We have here serial number 48. You can imagine before it was whipped off, all this will be covered in gold and silver. And here are the two areas where the gold is more prominent. Now, we want to talk about the strokes over here. Actually, these are rounded strokes. Simple. It sounds as if like, oh, why do you need to emphasize on this? It's so simple. But actually drawing things that are round is actually one of the most difficult things. And I've seen how Martin painted this before. He painted it in one single stroke. With the calligraphy brush and then goes the pine suit ink to demarcate, to deline where the cranes are. And if you are more into art, you have heard the story about Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci, that when he was learning art, he was first taught how to draw X, and he just kept drawing X after X after X, the oval shaped X, and that's where he mastered his skill. Now, for someone to actually take up the brush and then draw circles after circles after circles, it is actually not that easy. And of course, we know that other than the skill, the circles actually they mean something even more. 
As the painting's name would say, greetings to heaven and enrichment of earth. They really represent the heavenly bodies, the stars that we are at. You cannot have the stars by yourself, but you can have something that portrays the stars. And imagine when you place it at home, and this will go into your dreams, blessing you day and night. Cheers. The Arts Beyond Museums series and Master Yun Longzi's Feng Shui Art are proud to be sponsored by Le Hong Perrier. For 200 over years, Le Hong Perrier has not worked with any other artist before. When you purchase a piece of Feng Shui Art exhibited in this Art Beyond Museums series, you will also be getting a complimentary set of five different specially selected cuvées of Le Hong Perrier Champagne. De La Cove, De Cove Rosé, Brut Millesimi, Demisec Harmony, and De Cove Grand Siac. So that you can enjoy the taste of elegance while basking in the prosperity of Master Yun's feng shui paintings and calligraphies. Cheers to prosperity and elegance.